Remember how much fun you had with diesel particle filters? Well, the gasoline ones are here and they're coming soon to a car near you. Maybe. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where yeah, new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Exhaust particle filtration is, on balance, a good thing. Yes, you heard that right, a good thing. Because in a binary universe where you can have lung cancer or not have lung cancer, I'll take not have lung cancer if that's okay with you. Let's keep that in mind. Here's a salient question from Chris. Just checking out the new RAV4 to be released soon and I noticed that it will be using a GPF. From what I can make out, this technology is starting to be used on more and more brands. Are these GPFs going to be as big a problem as the DPFs when used on short trips, etc., when it might not get hot enough to burn off the particles and eventually clog up? And what about the cost to replace them if they do clog up? Will they be as expensive as DPFs? I'm just going to preface this by saying I don't have crystal balls, so I cannot actually answer this question completely, but let's deal with what we know. And kicking off with the kickoff right here, GPF means gasoline particle filter, and those crazy Germans sometimes call it an OPF or Otto particle filter. My understanding is that they'll be required to meet Euro 6 emission standards. So at this point, that's really only relevant to Europe and China where the same thing is called China 6, not Euro 6. For North America and Australia, no requirement for GPFs in the foreseeable future. So look, basically I don't agree that DPFs, the diesel ones, have been a comprehensive cluster fuck. Some installations have been poorly R&D'd by some manufacturers and too many customers among them have been let down. There's no question about that, but the number of unproblematic DPFs still greatly outweighs the number of problematic ones. And that means DPFs are striking a blow in favour of clean air, which we all want, and reducing premature preventable deaths. Ditto. Let us not lose sight of that, shall we? You DPF delete mother lovers should therefore be quite ashamed of yourselves. Just saying. I'd further suggest that diesels produce many more particles than petrols, even the GDI direct injection gasoline engines, which produce more particles than port injected engines, the older one, but they consume less fuel and emit less CO2. That's the GDI ones. Even the GDI engines produce fewer particles than diesels. So there's less demand on a GPF in that sense than there is on a DPF because the GPF has fewer particles to weed out. And I'd suggest that car makers have already learned a great deal from any negative DPF experiences. I guess one way to look at this is, if you live in Retardistan or Shitsville, perhaps we can be kind of happy. The Euro trash and the chinks will be de facto GPF lab rats for us. Because the tech should be reasonably sorted out by the time it eventually darkens our doors. However, for a small volume of cars, you know, if you're only producing a small number and you're a car maker, it might just be cheaper for that car maker to design the powertrains with GPFs and then deploy them like that globally. Because there's a cost either way, right? If they go with global deployment of GPFs, then it's the cost of the GPF itself and the unique parts and control systems, right? If they go with only GPFs where demanded by regulation, it's the cost of designing and building a non-GPF exhaust system and control system and the cost of logistics complexity upstream on the production line. So there's no free option here, meaning we will probably get some GPF cars despite being years behind other markets in the clean air regulatory stakes. I think currently about two-thirds of new gasoline cars in Europe are GDI and about 50% cars like that in the USA. 
If you're interested, okay, for aspiring automotive pub trivia champions, the first production car with a GPF was a Mercedes-Benz S500 that was in early 2014. And currently, GPFs are fitted to some Benzes, Volkswagens, BMWs, Peugeots, and some other car makers. In the middle of last year, 2018, one GPF manufacturer, Corning, had supplied 1 million GPF units for the Euro market alone. So they are already out there in substantial volumes. They're on the way, whether you like it or not. And like the death of the CD player and the increasing trivialization of free-to-air TV, there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. The rise of the GPF is inevitable, subject, I guess, to the world not ending next Tuesday around lunchtime.